Well, rates continue to rise as President Trump signals that he's unhappy with the Fed raising them. Interest rates impact everything, of course, from mortgages to credit cards. So should you be worried? To Trump 2020 Advisory Board member and real estate pro Jason Meiser, uh, Jason Meiser, uh, market watcher Ben Phillips, and our very own Deirdre Bolton. Uh, you know, a lot of people still, Deirdre, are saying, man, the president, uh, you know, going after the Fed. You know, you're not supposed to do that. He did break protocol. He broke protocol again. Again. <laughs> However, he also said, you know, Jerome Powell, the chairman, is a good man. And he also said, I am going to let the Fed do what it wants to do. I have just always expressed these opinions, my opinions as a private citizen, and I'm not really going to change that just simply because I'm president. Listen, I think some total, if you look at Fed funds futures, most people are expecting two more rate increases this year. Uh, if you look at the earnings that we've seen so far, earnings are coming in really strong. Strongly. Even the IMF talking about U.S. growth staying on pace. Of course, tons of warnings if we have a trade war that escalates. But for the moment, I think most investors are okay with what's going on. Ben, is that is that where we are right now? Uh, and 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 does President Trump have a point with re, with the regard to what China has did over the last couple of weeks, the last few weeks, uh, sort of stealthily pushing the yuan lower? Uh, you know, mitigating the impact or trying to mitigate the impact of this trade battle. Yeah, I mean, I think the president is concerned about the dollar strengthening, and we were talking about that actually before coming on here today. Just the, the stronger dollar is generally bad for U.S. trade deficits, right? Uh, if we see a continued rate increase, that's going to be even a stronger dollar. And so I think that's what President Trump is looking at in the administration, and that's probably why he's given some of that. Can feedback. I raise something, though, quickly? I mean, I think yeah. part of the yuan's weakness is because there are a lot of global investors who actually think a trade war would hurt China more than it would hurt the U.S. Sure. We consume 80 percent of what we produce. We have a pretty active consumer class in a way that China doesn't. And there are actually signs of slowing in the economy. Now, I know whatever data points we get from them are not always with full transparency, right, right. but there are actually universal signs of a slowdown even in their economy. Well, they've got some issues. They've got some problems. Yeah. They've got a debt problem and a credit, and a credit problem. And the fact that P, uh, People's Bank of China uh, is giving banks cash and saying, you know, we want you to buy bad debt with that. So, uh, you know, it's a two-pronged yeah. thing. They have their own issues with or without trade. there's a lot of money around outside that official banking system as well. Well, we had an existing home sales report out today. Day, that was a huge miss. Now, it, it, to me, I, I think the chart that to me helps explain it is uh, prices have gone like this, and now all of a sudden sales are starting to go like this. Uh, have we hit the point where now people just can't afford the, these existing home prices? Have they gone too far? And are, to, to, is that one of the main reasons we're seeing these these disappointments? I think that we're we're definitely in a in a in a, in a buyer's market uh, on the housing front. But I think going back to the interest rate environment and, and raising rates, I think right now would be a, a dangerous thing. I think we need to keep rates low. Look, we're digging ourselves out of the previous administration's abysmal economic policies. We had eight years under Obama, and the Fed could do nothing but keep it unchanged at nearly zero. Uh, to pump up this economy. And we now have an unemployment rate at an 18-year low. We have a GDP that's approaching 4%. We have wage growth that's growing at the fastest pace, I think, since January of 2009. So the economy... That's the one that scares the Fed, though. The, right, the wage growth, is that, that's what scares the Fed. Remember, you go back to January, that 2.9 print sent the Dow off 666 points that session. I agree with you, though. I think it's outrageous that the Federal Reserve prints $3.5 trillion when the banks get in trouble, but think we should slow the economy because somebody who hadn't had a raise in 10 years right. made 3% more year over well, year. Well, and I think there's also the concern balanced in that equation was this huge tax overhaul, right, that was passed in December 2017. And so there's an argument to be made that uh, the Trump administration actually did a lot for corporations and therefore is doing a lot for workers. And so that the Fed, just to take the opposite point, is actually in a position to tighten a little bit. And the Fed has but, been pretty clear saying they're not going to tighten unless they see the economy, this economy continuing. Right. But as this it economy is. is not overheated. Like I said, we're just digging ourselves out of eight years of abysmal economic policies. So let, let's, let, let's let the economy under Trump start to perform. Let's let the tax cut and reform bill. Uh, start to trickle down into the into the American worker, and let's let's let these wages start to grow. And when the if and when the economy starts to overheat, we can always play with the interest rates. But I think right now, I think we're digging ourselves out of it. Well, Ben, we know the Fed wants to sort of be ahead of that. They don't want the overheating that to happen. Right. And then uh, you know, Alan Greenspan, uh, I think, is you know, many people point to, to the maestro. That was the main mistake that he made. Mm -hmm. uh, that he he waited too long yeah, to he's act. He's like hanging out. 
Yeah. So. Oh, I mean, I mean, we've been talking about wage inflation. People have been talking about wages elevating, but we really haven't even seen it until just now. So that is one one thing that I think that d- deserves some some credit. We haven't really seen big wage inflation. The risk is that we are seeing asset speculation. We're seeing bubbles, whether it's cryptocurrencies or wherever you want to look. Asset prices are getting ahead of the fundamentals now, and that's probably our biggest concern for Although markets. Although, as a market watcher, though, the Dow is cheaper now than it. The market is it's, uh, trading at a 4 PE of like 16 and a half. It was over 20. Well, I mean, it's and actually gotten cheaper. We're much more skeptical of forward valuations, actually, or forward earnings estimates. I mean, S&P is up 10% on 2019. That's the consensus. We could paint a picture where it's actually down 10% if we see continued inflation, we see global growth fall off from, from global trade issues. Now you have margin compression, earnings so you declines. Think, so you think earnings are, are I mean, uh, you think the P.E. ratio, you don't, is, is it, where would you put it then? Well, I'd say earnings estimates are too high. Earnings so that, even though, the even though we're blown, up, even though we're blown them out of the water now, we blew them out of the water last quarter, and guidance is phenomenal. You still think all of that is, is... If the global trade stuff settles, and we actually come with some positive agreements out of that, and we have more global trade across the world, then there's a scenario well, that, where you could see a really strong earnings 2019. That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're in the middle of renegotiating these trade deals. Why would we raise interest rates in an environment like that so the dollar goes up and... We're, 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 hurting our own, we're hurting ourselves in that, in that negotiation. And adding to the speculative bubble, I think in corporate credit, right, there are a lot of, it's not quite warning signals, but there are a lot of people saying like, okay, people are beginning to take on riskier and riskier debt. Not that that means that it's 2008 all over again, but there just are people monitoring it. Well, you know, I mean, some of this stuff does self-correct, like the, you know, Bitcoin has come down an awful lot from its high. I think it almost hit 20,000, now it's seven. Uh, and, and stocks, it's, it's tough. I, I mean, I see so many industries outside of tech where valuations seem to be extremely low to me right now. I mean, I know you're more on the real estate side. And again, you know, when I look at the real estate side and I see new home sales, existing home sales, I don't see the euphoria. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, maybe there's some issues there, but I don't see the euphoria. No, the euphoria is not there. And I think that we need to, again, this tax cut and reform bill was massive. It was one of the biggest in history. We need to let that sort of go get into the market and, and let the confidence sort of overtake the market. Is anyone concerned, though, that, that or th- I happen to think that Jay Powell, coming from Carlisle, being a stock guy, a, Mar- a Wall Street guy, as opposed to a classically trained economist, gets what we're kind of talking about more so than his colleagues. I mean, does that provide us with some cover? I think so. I mean, previously the Fed would, it seemed like just a bunch of economists go lock themselves in a room and then they would come out and say things that were not in plain English at all and people would have a hard time interpreting them. He's a plain spoken Every now and then they'd open the door and say, we need one more person. We're trying to change this light bulb. Yeah. Not just joking. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, Chairman Powell, is, he's, I think he's more candid with how he's thinking. He speaks in plain English and he's definitely in tune with the markets. So I think that's actually positive. He's worried about speculative asset bubbles, I think. Yeah. All right. Great conversation. Thank you all very much. Really appreciate it.